What's up, model builders? Gentleman94 here, and welcome back to Ben Builds. Today we are taking an in-depth look at the Russian KV-1 model 1939 that I picked up from Squadron the other day. I had an unboxing video. I had mentioned I might want to kind of get into the nitty-gritty on these kits, so I thought definitely start off with the earliest, the model 1939. So let's go ahead and open up this bad boy and see what we've got inside. All right, so first things first, overall appearance, it's pretty standard. You've got your styrene sprues wrapped up in basic bags. That's not really anything too exciting. So side separated area for the hull. Looks like we also have inside, yeah, we got the barrel in there and we've got the tow cable along with the clear sprue for lenses. Let's just take a look at the first sprue here. Uh, what do we got? This is uh, road wheels. These are road wheels here. Basic early style road wheels. Nothing really that exciting there. Okay, here we go. We've got the early style tow hooks. We've got the early style mantle for the gun. Here is the early style turret with the rounded profile with the rivets there and there. Very cool. Let's see, we've got, uh, okay, here tool bins, no, new style tow hooks, turret ring, top road wheels, early, early style. So, Okay, uh, what have we got here? Uh, fenders, hatches, um, here's our torsion bar suspension here, rear engine decking, more fenders, inner engine hatch, Okay, we have our tracks, link by link tracks. We've got some pre molded track sag in it. That's why I like to use these because you get that nice heavy track sag effect. You have to clean those up a bit. They usually come up with a few ejector pin marks. And the last big sprue here, we've got our front of our tank. It's like the turret ring. I have to come back to this one here. We've got some dried sprockets, just odds and ends, vision port, front idler, suspension. All right, we have our instruction manual here. Let's go ahead and put that off to the side real quick. These are our brass parts. We've got the rear engine vent. Yeah, we've got some mesh for the upper screens for the engine venting. So, yeah, cool. So let's take a look at these instructions. Uh, typical trumpeteer, brief, you know, before you begin, read this stuff here. Okay, it's got a picture of Russian KV-1, 1939. Some weird legends down here. Decal applications, open it up. <clears throat> Trumpeteer is nice and it always gives you a nice full page printout of what your tank is going to look like, or what your airplane is going to look like. It's got the top here, got the color callouts, metallic black and Russian green. So that's cool. I, I like to save these and kind of put them off in a little scrapbook. Uh, basic instructions, nothing too fancy. Part breakdowns, exploding drawings here and there. Your suspension hooked on there, torsion bar, road wheels, tracks. Uh, here's your turret. Here's your prototype style turret. Call out for metal barrel. Looks pretty good. Hmm, just 14, 14 steps. Got your old the. Uh, old style tow hooks, tow cables, nice. Can't complain. Looks like it's easy to understand. Fairly simple, uh, fairly simple drawings there. Let's put that aside. So there are basically two different types of model builders out there. You have your scratch builders and you have your out of the box builders. If we built this kit out of the box, we would come up with very nice looking KV-1, but it wouldn't necessarily be correct. That's why you come up with references. So now I'll be using two books on this build. I'll be using the first one here, the Tankograd uh, Soviet Special 
This is a 2002. Uh, this is the early variants of the KV-1. And I'll also be using this here, which is the Osprey New Vanguard KV-1, KV-2 basic history from 39 to 45. This more just for basic information. Uh, there's some photographic history here, but not a lot. This is the one I'm going to be using most of the time, because this has just tons and tons of photographs. Shows a lot of cool, cool KV pictures, some of them knocked out, some of them actually in combat. It's got some 135th scale drawings, which are really helpful for comparing. You know, So I'll be using this book more or less all the time. Now, as I mentioned back in my preview video, when I first unboxed all these models, I ran across this KV-1 1939 model, and I realized that it had a bow machine gun. Now, in all of my uh, readings and things using, you know, using this book here, all of my readings show the early versions of the KV-1s without bow machine gun. You can see right here, there's no bow machine gun there. So we can even flip through some of these pages there's no bow machine gun there. You just have the pistol port. No bow machine gun there. Even over here, none. There's no bow machine gun on any of these early versions. But their turrets are different. Their turrets are actually a more squared off box style turret, not so much the rounded turret that we have here. So I was wondering exactly where this tank comes into play. What exactly is this tank? It's some sort of a hybrid, obviously. Well, one of the nice things about having reference material is when you look through different material references, you can come across pictorial evidence to prove one way or the other. And this picture right here, right here, page 19, we've got a picture of a KV-1, 1941 lower hull with 1939 prototype turret. Now the reasoning behind this is that in 1941, when the Germans were besieging Leningrad, the, the Russian um, tank manufacturers that were inside the city were so hard pressed to find material to continue production of the KV-1, they would end up taking parts from other vehicles like this 1941 hull and they would slap on whatever they had lying around, in this case a 1939 uh, prototype turret. So that's kind of interesting, and it's always fun when you see things like that, and you can prove that this model that the Trumpeter Company has designed and manufactured for us is actually a 1941 with a 1939 turret. So really, this is a hybrid that would have been seen around Leningrad in late 1941. So that's really cool, and I always love finding evidence of that fact. But see, I don't want to really build that one. I want to build a 1939 KV-1 with no bow machine gun. So I'm going to have to find a way to go ahead and to do that. Now looking at the actual model piece itself, the front part of the hull, we see that there is already a hole right there where the bow machine gun um, would normally be, be mounted. Now it looks to me, and I've lined these up with the actual drawings in the book, and it looks like this is a pistol port. Trumpeteer was nice enough to include that, though didn't make any mention of it in the instructions. In the actual model itself, they gave us a pistol port. All we have to do is come up with either A, finding some sort of a spare bit of sprue that we can round off and use as a plug for that, or B, it might have one in the kit. So that makes it a whole lot easier. And then in terms of the little bits and pieces that would have to be attached onto it, you leave them all off. You leave off the bow machine gun, you leave off the extra added armor ring around that bow machine gun, and you just run the visor and the pistol port, plus the headlight and the horn. That's it. Anyway, that's what we've got so far. Uh, the model looks good. I have my plans. I have my, I have my references. Definitely love this book. This book is great. So many cool pictures in here. So you could send just hours just looking over every inch of these, of these tanks. At least I could. But then again, I'm a little crazy. So anyway, model looks good. I am excited to build it. I am going to be starting on this as soon as I can uh, find the time to really pull out the air compressor and, and, and all the airbrushes and all that. I've got to find some Russian green that I like. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find paint you really like. So we're going to go ahead and call it quits for now. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, probably within the next couple of weeks, we'll have some more videos up. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.